what we'd like to look at is explicitly assigning the state codes to our states. If you recall, we actually used this thing called user enumerated state types to actually assign these descriptive names to the states in our finite state machine. Okay, so when I look at this example of a push button window controller, I can come in here and I have these two signals called current state and next state, and I actually get to see the value, the name of the state that I have at that moment in time. W underscore close, W underscore open. This is fantastic for debugging systems because it shows you where you should be. And you should be able to correlate this very easily to your state diagram if you even drew one. Okay? Let's take a look at how we did that. Right here is where we did this. We used, if you recall this, this is called a user enumerated state type. Okay? And I'm going to come up here and type it out just so you can see it. It's called a user defined enumerated data type. User defined is obvious. It means you defined it. Enumerated, not so easy to understand. Enumerated means you explicitly listed out each and every value that this state could take on. So you said this new type can take on what I want is W closed and W open. If you wanted to add more, you could, but you enumerated all the possible values that a signal of this type could take on. We then created two signals called current state and next state of that type, and voila, it worked. <clears throat> now, when you do this, and I will tell you, this is almost always how you do a, a finite state machine in VHDL, you allow the synth the synthesizer, the synthesizer to select the state codes for you. Okay? You might suspect that it's going to use binary state coding. You might suspect it would use gray code. You really don't know what it's going to do. In fact, on an FPGA, you want to know the, the encoding type that it usually uses? One hot. It almost always uses one hot because of the architecture of an FPGA. Okay? But you know what? You don't even care. Because all you know is that you described a finite state machine and said it's got two states, do whatever you want. If you give it 100 states, it'll do whatever encoding it wants to best fit the actual target hardware. However, sometimes you might say, I want to explicitly define the state codes. So I, don't, I want to still use things like next state and current state as signal names because they're very descriptive in my VHDL. But I want to say, OK, I want. I want W closed to be a 0, and I want W open to be a 1. I don't want the synthesizer to do that for me automatically. So here's the way that you do this. First of all, you are going to do this using subtypes, and this will be called explicitly defining state codes with subtypes. Okay? What we are going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to comment out this prior thing. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go more, and I'm going to go comment selected, and there we go. So now I'm sitting here and my VHDL is still the same down here. I haven't changed anything. What I want to do though <clears throat> is I want to explicitly do this. So here's how I start. I'm going to use a keyword called subtype, and I'm going to create it of called again state type, but what a subtype is is it is a subset of an existing type that already exists. So we are going to define this thing called state type, but it is of standard logic. Okay? So standard logic is, are the values that it can take on. Now, it's standard logic in the fact that it can take on zeros and ones. If we had a whole bunch of states, this would need to be standard logic vector. For this push button window controller example, it only has two states. So we're going to encode it as 0 and 1. <clears throat> okay? So that's why I only need one bit of standard logic. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a constant, and I give this the descriptive state name that I want. In this example, it's W open. And then I give it this subtype named state type, and I assign it a value, and that now hard codes this subtype state type, going to be equal to 0, and I created it as a constant. So the name, let's, re let's restate that using the words in a different order. The name that I'm going to use for my descriptive state, which is wopen, is now a constant. 
it is of type, state type, which was a subtype of standard logic. Okay? The reason that you, you had to create the subtype was because when I come down here and I'm going to do the signal, I'm going to create, again, a signal called current state and next state. And I want to define both of those signals as state type. Voila. So I feel so good. I jumped ahead. I got to go define one more constant. But this was the whole rationale for doing the state type because I wanted current state and next state. When I do that, that doesn't change any of the VHDL that I wrote down here. Okay? So all my processes still work identically. Let's go ahead and define the code that we want for W closed. And then we'll simulate this and see how it works. So closed. So let's come over here. Bah, bah, bah. And I'm going to go boom. All right, so this should work. Let's see if it does. So I got this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to go ahead and compile selected. Successful. Now when I come in here, notice that I have W closed and W open has these descriptive names. If I restart this simulation and I run this, now look at what happened. Current state is now a 1 and a 0. Next state is also a 1 and a 0. So I have explicitly changed these things. It's harder to debug because you have to know what the states are, right? But we, ha we now get to see exactly what these things are. So that's how you would do it. What if I wanted to use, let's see if we can do this. Uh, what if I wanted to do one hot encoding? Does anybody remember what one hot encoding is? Exactly. Each state corresponds to one bit being asserted. So that means what I would do is I would say like W open is going to be 0, 1, and W close is going to be 1, 0. <clears throat> Each state that I have in my finite state machine corresponds to a bit in the state code. So if I have 75 states, I need 75 bits in my state code. But each bit corresponds to one particular state. If I did this, what would I need to change? Well, the state type needs to be standard logic vector. And now it's going to be 1 down to 0. So it had to be a 2-bit vector. And everything else should be OK. So now, let's go ahead and see if this works. So I save it. Compile selected. It was successful. The waveform, let's see if it changes automatically. We might have to reload the signal since it's a different width. But let's restart it and see what happens. I restart it. Boom! It worked! Look at this! Now I have my current state being a one-hot code, and etc. and etc. Okay, what was the point of this? The point is this. There's two ways to do state, state encoding in VHDL. One is you allow the synthesizer to take care of it. That's almost always what you're going to do. But it's called user-defined enumerated data types. And you do it with this approach right here. You create a new type on state type, and then you assign descriptive names for each value that type can take on. If you said, I don't want to let the synthesizer handle this for me, I want to explicitly define it, you have to use subtypes. The reason you use subtypes is because ultimately you want to get to a point where you still do the signal declaration that defines current state and next state so that none of your VHDL changes. Okay? None of your VHDL changes, and so in order to do that, you have to actually define constants that are of a subtype. Okay, so that is how you explicitly assign your state codes.